And uh, so I want to just bring greetings from our sister congregation, congregations in the Philippines. Um, they say blessings to you all. Uh, they got a good thing going there. Uh, I want to thank you, each of you that are, have made a faith promise. I just want to encourage you. Your faith promise dollars are being put to good work. Many of you know that they in the Philippines there are um, they're they're building a, a, a building and um, they're in this process because they really don't want to. Uh, I mean, they've got a loan, but they want to pay for as much as they can as they go, and they need money. Uh, and God is supplying. Uh, he told me we need five thousand dollars a week, and this is not a big ministry. And what's happening is they're trying to get everything to where they can uh, begin to finish things off inside, which can take some more time. But they want to get everything kind of under roof and ready to go so that when the rainy season starts, which is about right now, um, they can do that. And they're on, on track, but they've seen God move and they've seen God supply. And uh, it's wonderful to see that. And so thank you as you are participating in that. Just thank you. If you are, have not, did not make a faith promise, if you have a heart for missions and you want to get involved in that, there's still time. Just simply pray and say, Lord, how much do you want to release through me uh, through the end of September? And uh, you can just make that a part of your giving uh, there with your check or your offering. Uh, you can see there. But uh, it's good to be here. Good to be back. Um, I'm going to kind of, something that God put on my heart, uh, particularly late, Thursday, Friday, Saturday of this week. Um, and so the title this morning is, is You Are Faithful. How many of you know that the Lord is faithful? And I've just gotten really kind of um, immersed with that. It says in Psalm 89, 8, O Lord God of hosts, who is mighty like you, O Lord? Your faithfulness also surrounds you. Father, I pray that your purpose would be accomplished here this morning. Holy Spirit, I invite you to speak to our hearts. I ask, Lord, that our hearts would have good soil this morning. And Lord, that the seed of your word would be planted. And Lord, that it would take root and grow in us and become strong. And as we apply it to our lives, Lord, that we would be changed and transformed, Lord. That you would be glorified, but Lord, that your word would also go forth and accomplish that which you purpose. Not only in our lives, but in this congregation, in this community, even, Lord, in this world. And so we give you thanksgiving. Give us ears to hear what you're speaking to us. In Jesus' name, amen. Has God been faithful to you this week? This last three weeks? God has been faithful to me. And I have to brag a little bit. I just spent three weeks in the Philippines, okay? Three weeks. That's the longest continuous time that I've been there. Uh, this, I think, was the fourth or fifth year that I've gone. Uh, I had a good trip. It was long. I figured out coming back that from the time I left, uh, got in the car to go to the Manila airport to the time I walked in my door, I had spent 31 and a half hours traveling, okay? Continuous. That's like, you know, from airport to airport to airport and then back. And, um, and the longest flight, I think, was almost 13 hours uh, in there. But... Um, you know, I had a good trip. My plane did not crash. <laughs> hallelujah. Can I get a hallelujah for a plane not crashing? Isn't that good? Yes. I did not wilt in the heat. That is huge. My wife, she texted Ashley because we were having communication problems back and forth. And, and she said, you know, I'm just, I'm, 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 I'm concerned because Kenton doesn't do well in the heat. And Ashley came to me with that message. She said, your wife cares about you so much. She's concerned that you're not well in the heat. And I said, she's not concerned about me. She's concerned about you because she knows I get really crabby in the heat. <laughs> she's just wanting you to be on your guard. And, um, but Nancy was very, uh, she was concerned. She was, I hope. But, um, but you know, I, I got to sleep in an air-conditioned room for about two thirds of the time, okay? But over there, it's a lot like here, except it's about five to seven to eight degrees hotter. So it was 98 and humid. They don't have this dry heat. You know, you talk about, well, it was a dry heat. It doesn't really feel as hot. No, this was a wet heat. I mean, you'd wake up in the morning 
And you know how when you go camping, you kind of feel all damp, you know, your clothes? That was the way it was the whole time, okay? It was just kind of humid. It was very humid, very hot. And, uh, but I got to sleep in air conditioning two-thirds of the nights. And uh, so hallelujah for that. Uh, so I got to sleep. Uh, you know, another thing, this is kind of personal, but I had no intestinal issues while I was there. Yes, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. It is not fun to have intestinal issues when you're away from your surroundings that you're familiar with. But, um, you know, I was able to minister to about 50 young, excited, hungry worship leaders over there. We, we ministered at a worship camp for about a week, and I was able to teach them uh, why we worship the way we worship. And uh, they were excited. Uh, they, you know, you look at, in the Filipinos, it's just, it's just great. Uh, but you look out and you see these kids. That's what they look like. They're kids. They're like, you know, they look like they're 14 years old. Every single one of them. And then you get to know them. And, and they're 23, 24, 25 years of age. And this one guy, he's like, he, he called a, a, a sea merchant. You know, he's, he's making deals in the world, you know, shipping stuff in and out of the Philippines. And he looks like he's 15 years old. Gee. But um, I was able to teach him and, and why we worship. But it was a privilege also to minister to them prophetically and to lay hands and to activate gifts and to see them just really uh, you know, embrace what was being taught. Uh, it was a privilege. Uh, I later on in the, my time was able to minister to and it, privilege to teach and minister to about 30 Filipino pastors. And these are people that really don't have access to a lot of other leadership training. Uh, where we were the first week was pretty civilized. Okay, it was. It was a, it was a city about the size of Sarasota. Where we were week, the, the second and third weeks were much more remote. And um, so, uh, but again, we were able to, to teach and to minister. I, one other thing, you know, I, I was able to raise most, probably 80% of the money uh, for this trip outside of the congregation and outside of the network of congregations that we lead. And so I praise God for that. Okay, that's a logistical thing, but thank you, Lord, for your provision. Uh, you know... God was faithful to me. God was faithful to me. And so I ask you again, has God been faithful to you these past three weeks? You know, when I look at what could have been, when we look at what could have been, we realize God's faithfulness to us. When we realize what could have happened and didn't, or we see what worked out that we didn't anticipate, we see God going ahead of us. And the psalmist in Psalm 89 is addressing the Lord. He's saying, there's no one mighty like you, God, no one other. Your faithfulness surrounds you, he says, surrounds you. Isaiah 11, 5 says this, righteousness will be, or shall be the belt of his loins and faithfulness the belt of his waist. Faithfulness, God's faithfulness is, is likened to a belt. One of the things, uh, one of the more interesting experiences that I had in the Philippines. Um, interesting, you know, is an interesting word. Interesting can mean interestingly wonderful, interestingly like, what in the world are they doing? I mean, you know, it can go either way in any way. But it was an interesting experience because... Um, for about three days, we did a, a kind of a pastor's retreat for some pastors, and we were in a place that, um, you know, it was, it, was, it was one of those things where, like I said, you know, I had a hotel or a room that was air conditioned, but then everything else was outside uh, in this heat. And even cooking, uh, they, you know, they, they had like a, a, an area for cooking, which basically for me was camping. And uh, so you did, you know, they had gas burners and they, they cooked lots of rice. I ate lots of rice, morning, noon, and night, I ate rice, and it was good. I really appreciate rice and vegetables, and you know, it was good stuff. And, um, but they cook it outside, and they do it so well. And, uh, but they, uh, so anyway, we, we, we're outside, and, and, and it's hot, and one morning, they said, well, let's, there, there's these falls, okay? Sort of like the Filipino state park kinds of stuff, okay? There's these falls, and there was two of them. One was 2.1, no, 2.7 kilometers away, but you had to walk to it. The second one was 5.1 kilometers away, but you could drive to it. 
So it's getting, you know, it's, it's, more, it's morning, but it's still, it's like here, you know, even in the morning, in the summertime, it's 85 degrees. And so it's 95 degrees there. And so we said, let's drive. I like that option. So we turn down this road, there's a sign falls this way kind of thing. And we turn down this road and 0.8 miles from the turn, the road ends. And so we hike. And we hike, and we hike. Now, the problem was with this is I can hike. I mean, I'm, I'm okay, I can walk. And you know, it's, it's, but I had this pair of shorts on that were just slightly too big and I didn't have a belt. <laughs> I very quickly saw the value of belts. And so I'm hiking along and you know, I'm kind of, going like this, <laughs> and, and they didn't, I, I, maybe you've never had that problem, you know, I'm in a group of people, and we're hiking up, and they're nice, they don't say anything, I mean, you know, I didn't lose anything, but still, it's very uncomfortable, you know, the belt holds everything together, it keeps things where they need to be, and God here, his faithfulness, is likened to a belt. Likened to holding everything together. His faithfulness holds everything together that is God. It speaks of, of his loyalty to us. It speaks of how much he loves us. It speaks of his commitment to us. And no matter what, he's, he's committed. He's in for the long haul. It speaks of, his fulfill, of fulfilling his promises in us. Fulfilling his promises through us. You know, the faithfulness holds it all together because he is faithful. That's part of his character. It's part of who he is. When he says something, it is going to happen. When he makes a commitment, he is going to follow through. When he makes a promise, he is going to see that promise realized in your life. Do you realize that? That he is faithful. The psalmist in the first verse of 89 says, I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. With my mouth, I will make known your faithfulness to all generations. The psalmist, he begins this psalm by connecting mercy and faithfulness. He says, I'll sing of the mercies of God. Let me ask you a question. How many of you need God's mercy? I mean, we mess things up. Sometimes we intentionally mess things up. Those are not our proudest moments. Sometimes we mess things up and don't even mean to mess things up. I mean, the, Saturday, yesterday, Nancy and I went to Detweiler's. And we we're up on university, and, and we went to Detweiler's. And she's, we, go, we wanted to get some meat for today. And, and she has this, you know, this stuff in a crock pot type thing. We need to get, like, stew beef. But she said, get some meat. And I'm thinking, chunks of meat. And so I go up to the counter, and I had to wait. And so Nancy said, I'm going to go finish what we need. You wait here. Okay, I can be a good husband, wait here. And, uh, and, and, and if, if your number comes up, order the meat. And so I ordered the meat. And, and, and I said, here, I want these, you know, because I'm thinking chunks. And the guy looked at me and I said, yeah, I want three pounds, about three pounds. Okay. So he starts, and he got like four chunks, three and a half pounds. Looked good to me. Actually, looked very good to me. He wraps it up. Puts it thing. About that time, Nancy comes back and she says, oh, you know, yeah, right here, you know, here's the meat. We get into the line at Detweiler's and she looks at the meat and it says $76. <laughs> now that is an expensive crock pot meal, let me tell you. <laughs> And Nancy looks at me and she says, I'm going to take this back, okay? <laughs> I said, yeah, that's, that's fine. <laughs> so she leaves me again. I can do this right. I go ahead and check out the rest of the stuff, okay? And she goes back to the meat counter. 
She comes up to the meat counter, and it's exactly the same guy that helped me. And she said, I think my husband got the wrong thing. And he looked and he said, well, I kind of wondered when I did this, wrapped this up the first time, you know. And, and she had wanted like stew beef, and, and this was like filet mignon. It was the most expensive thing there, like $21 a pound kind of stuff, okay. Yeah, I thank the Lord for my, my wife's mercy. I thank the Lord for the meat guy's mercy. You know, it's just we, we, we mess up sometimes. We mess up sometimes, and yet God, in his faithfulness, I think he chuckles at us. And for some of us, he probably actually gets an out loud laugh, okay? But, you know, he says, you, you know, it, that's okay. I'm covering you. I'm going, you know, God's faithfulness, is, God's faithfulness is the gap between what we can do and what only he can do. And his faithfulness to see us through. You know, sometimes we sin. God is faithful, the Bible says, according to 1 John 1, 9, to forgive our sin and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. Wow. That means that even when we mess up, even when we sin, that God's faithfulness has already provided for our forgiveness. You know, many times we feel inadequate. We feel like, I don't really know what it takes. I don't have what it takes. And, and we find ourselves in situations where we really don't know what to do. And some of us do different things when we get in those inadequate situations. It's like some people, they get into a situation where they're inadequate and they just kind of shrink back and don't say anything. I don't know what to say. I don't know what to do. So therefore, I'm going to do nothing. There are other people that get into inadequate situations and they just decide, I'm going to forge ahead. I'm going to do something. I may mess it up, but by golly, they're going to know I'm here. And some of us are in the middle. But, you know, when we're inadequate, it's like we, that's when God's faithfulness begins to kick in. We had a situation in the Philippines. They have church like we have church. They have church issues like we have church issues. There's family issues. They're, they're you know, humans are human beings across the world. And, uh, and you know, there was this issue in uh, that, that I, they, they were like, let's bring the big white guy in and see what he has to say. And, uh, and so, you know, they, they invite me in and I sit there and, and it was like, you know, I'm, I'm listening. And when they get intense and they kind of get, they, they talk in their native dialect, okay? But it's really different because they speak about three languages at the same time. There's the national dialect, there's their local dialect, and there's English. And so I'm listening along, and I'm hearing like one English word in ten. And, and so I think I know what's, but I don't really. I think I know what they're saying, but I really honestly had no idea. And so then they turn to me and say, what do you think? <laughs> and I knew a little bit of the situation and so I just simply, I'm like, I don't know if you do this. I do this a lot. It's like, Holy Spirit, what do I say now? And then I go and speak. And it's like, so I, you know, and, and it's just like three or four or five of us in a, in a circular table. And, and, and I say, well, I know this is the situation. And this is, you know, and, and so I speak into the situation, really not having heard the conversation for 20 minutes before this. And it was interesting because then it was like, they looked at each other and it was like, oh, and I don't know what I said that made a difference. I don't know how it made a difference, but I just know it made a difference. And I really don't know the outcome, but I guess it was good for the big white guy to be there because, you know, it just, it, it was, and you know, I was totally inadequate for the situation. I didn't know, but Something happened, and I believe it was God's faithfulness. He, his faithfulness bridges the gap between who we are and what God wants done. His faithfulness, not our talent, not our wisdom, not somehow that we're so smart or we're so great, but that he goes in and he does that. You know, it's interesting. Even the Bible says in 2 Timothy 2.13 that when, if we are faithless, even if we fall away, even if we just totally blow it, he remains faithful. 
He remains faithful to us because he cannot deny himself. What he's saying here is that he has placed his spirit within us. He's claimed us as sons and daughters. He's adopted us into his family. We're members of his kingdom. We are part of him. And even if we are faithless, he, and he is still faithful to us because he does not deny himself. See, many times our actions, our attitudes really don't deserve mercy. We actually deserve judgment. When it boils right down to it, I need a spanking. But you know what? God says, I'm faithful to you. I'm going to have mercy on you. We need mercy, and God is faithful to give it. And because he is faithful, he extends mercy. We mess things up, God cleans things up. We are inadequate, but God bridges the difference. And because he's committed to us, he gives us mercy. Because of his commitment, because of the commitment that he decided to make when each and every one of us came into his family, into the salvation knowledge of Jesus Christ, where we invited Jesus into our lives to be our Savior and to be our Lord. When we did that, his faithfulness kicked in to you and to me. He said, that's mine. That's my son. That's my daughter. I claim them. I adopt them. Therefore, I am going to be faithful to them, to see them through in whatever situation they find themselves, to go ahead of them no matter what. And the Bible says that this is for all generations. This is a promise, not just for me and for you, but for our kids and for our grandkids and our great grandkids and the great, 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 whatever grandkids that we won't know. But you know what? He is faithful to our generations to do this. The second verse of this Psalm says, I have said, mercy shall be built up forever. Your faithfulness, you still establish in the very heavens. This is established. This idea or this reality of God's faithfulness is established for eternity. In other words, Romans says he will never leave us. He will never forsake us. I think that's Romans. In other words, he's committed to us. In verse 5 of 89, it says that the heavens will praise your wonders, O Lord. Your faithfulness also in the assembly of the saints. See, the response of God to God's faithfulness is that we praise him. The response to God's faithfulness is that we lift him up and we praise him. And we tell him, we say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness. In heaven, God's faithfulness is a wonder. And he's praised for it there. I think that the angels, whatever the other heavenly beings there are, you know, they look at the earth, they see us humans, they see how fickle and how mistake ridden we are and what we do. You know, we go and we don't do the thing that we know we should do. We do what we shouldn't do. And, and we end up, and you know, God looks at us totally different. And then and, and the, 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 the things, the people in heaven, they look and they say, God, why do you put up with them? And God says, because I'm faithful to them. Because I made a commitment to them. Because they're my sons and they're my daughters. And when they get here, they're going to be family. They're going to be my family. On earth, we as the assembly of the saints also are to praise his faithfulness. And it's a wonder to us as well because we know how very human we really are. We know how we mess up. We know that we didn't measure up. And you know, it's a wonder. And yet, I can only speak personally. Lord, thank you so much. You are faithful to me. Without his faithfulness, I would be left at the level of my natural ability and my natural wisdom. Without his faithfulness, I would be at the mercy of those who seek my destruction. You know, David, often in the Psalms, he would say, Lord, you know, my enemies surround me, Lord. What am I going to do? But yet, Lord, you are faithful to me. Without his faithfulness to provide a savior, I would be left in judgment for my sin. This is why we bring an offering of thanksgiving into God's house. It's because he's been faithful to us. 
He is faithful. He has been faithful. He will be faithful. And that's why we praise him. And so this morning I say, God, you are faithful. God, thank you. Let's stand up. I want the worship team to come. Again, I'm going to ask you this. Has God been faithful to you? And if God has been faithful to you, I want you to bring an offering of thanksgiving and an offering of worship into the house this morning. The fruit of our lips giving thanks. Hebrews 13, 15. Has God been faithful to you? Praise him for his faithfulness. Thank him for his faithfulness. Acknowledge to God, even if you have to stop singing and say it, God, you are faithful to me. And maybe you don't feel his faithfulness right now. Maybe you're in a situation that you're like, well, wait a minute, God, I don't know. God, I need to know that you're going to be faithful in this situation. Now, he may not be faithful to do what you want him to do, but he will be faithful to do what needs to be done. And so if you need to respond this morning, the first response is in worship, but the second response is that you come to the altar and you stand in agreement with someone else and say, Lord, we acknowledge in this situation in this circumstance that I am facing, Lord, we agree together that you are faithful and you will continue to be faithful. And so as we worship, Father, I ask that you would prompt our hearts. Just lift your hands to the Lord. I want you to say with me, Lord, you are faithful. Lord, you are faithful. God, you have been faithful to me. And I thank you. Now let's begin to worship and let the Holy Spirit begin to move. Yeah. Oh, thank you, Lord.